Hello everybody and welcome back to Web Factory 2010 Tutorials. In this video we're gonna talk about navigation in Web Factory Smart Editor. The navigation framework in Web Factory Smart Editor allows us to build complex application with multiple subpages inside a single view. These subpages are triggered by the buttons and are displayed in the navigation target, which is the invisible rectangle holding the subpages. Now, let's see how we can build this kind of applications and use the navigation framework. And more important, how can the navigation framework save our precious time? In Smart Editor, we're gonna look in the toolbox for the navigation category. And in this category, we have everything we need to use the navigation framework. So let's start building our application. I'm gonna select navigation frame and put it in our page. And I'm gonna make it nice and big so all our subpages can fit inside this frame. Now, this frame requires subpages to be displayed inside because basically this frame is an empty container. So to create subpages to be displayed inside our navigation targets, we're gonna go in the ribbon in the project section of the ribbon bar and select add navigation page. And as you can see, a subpage has been added under our WF navigation target control. Now this subpage has by default the same size as the navigation target, but the size of the subpage can be changed. We can go into the appearance and make it bigger, for example like this, and in our navigation target we can configure the control to stretch the content to feel uniform or uniform to feel, and we can even configure scroll bar visibility. If our subpage is bigger than our navigation target, we can select the navigation target and either stretch the content to fit or set up the horizontal and vertical scroll bars. So the scroll bars can be set up to be auto, to be hidden or to be visible or to be completely disabled. So we have our target and we have a single subpage and we're gonna create another one because we're gonna use the first subpage as a default. I'm gonna go ahead and make the background of the subpage something like blue and make it even bigger so we can see a little bit how the navigation target works with scroll bars. We're gonna put the scroll bars to auto over here and in our second subpage, we're gonna leave this dimension as default because we want to see everything inside our navigation target. Besides our navigation target, we have to use navigation buttons to trigger our subpages. So we're gonna place several buttons over here, but for a starter, we're gonna use only two buttons. Our first button, we're gonna configure it right over here in the Property Inspector Navigation category. We're gonna add a navigation item and we're gonna select our target and our first subpage. And we're gonna click OK. In our second button, we're gonna go into the navigation items, we're gonna add one item, select the target and select the second subpage. Now, in our second subpage, we're gonna place some controls just to see something moving. So I'm gonna go into the Gorges category and take a level gauge and place it right over here. And I'm gonna go also into the labels control and get a signal information label. Now you can use whatever controls you want but for this example we're gonna use these two controls. So to get a glimpse of how the navigation works we're gonna build our applications right now but before doing this, let's make it look a little bit more normal. So we're gonna select the first button and go into general and type a name like button1 and we're gonna type a name for the second button too and we're gonna name it button2. 
I'm gonna click run and I'm gonna get back after our application is built. Our application is ready to run. So as you can see we have only two buttons, the button one and button two on our page, but trust me the navigation target it is over here we just can see it yet but we're gonna press the first button and as you can see the first sub page is triggered over here and you can see the scroll bars of the navigation target and you can see the scroll bars because our sub page is a lot bigger than our target so imagine we have a page under this frame and this frame is like a window so you get to scroll to see the whole page displayed beneath it now if we press our second button we're gonna see the second page with our controls defined now these controls have no signal attached so they're not displaying anything but we just can see that we have the second subpage loaded. So basically this is the principle of navigation in Smart Editor. But we're gonna go back now into design time and complicate things a little bit more to see how powerful this navigation framework really is. So we're gonna go back and start working a little bit harder on this example. In our navigation target if we go to configuration and default page the drop-down menu will allow us to set one of our two subpages as default so I'm gonna select subpage 1 as default what this will do is at runtime when our application will be loaded it will display the first subpage by default in our navigation target and I'm gonna click run right now just to see how this default page works as you can see our project is loaded and our first sub page is loaded by default into the target so this is what the default page option does we're gonna move a little bit further I'm gonna select the first button and edit the navigation properties so as you can see the first button displays the first sub page but we want it to display the second sub page just like the second button and you're gonna see why in a couple of minutes now I'm gonna copy this button actually I'm gonna copy both of them and paste them right over here so now we have four different buttons actually they are not very different but we're gonna make them different right now so we're gonna do button 3 and button 4 now as you can see all these buttons they all open the same sub page and you might wonder why why do we need four buttons to open the same sub page well because in our sub page we have these controls and using the buttons the navigation buttons we're gonna pass the signal to these controls by selecting each button so basically we're gonna configure one signal for the button one another signal for button two and another one for button three and button four and whenever we press this button one of these buttons at runtime the signal configured as a parameter on this navigation button will be passed to our sub page one over here and these two controls will automatically display the values for our passed signal now for this to happen we need to configure some parameters in our buttons so we're, I'm gonna select the first button and go into navigation and as you can see here in our navigation item besides the display window and the sub page tabs we also have a parameter value tab if we click the parameter value button another editor is opened which will allow us to create a new navigation parameter now with this navigation parameter we're gonna pass a signal to the sub page so I'm gonna name this parameter signal and in the value of this parameter we're gonna use the signal that we wanna send to the sub page so in our first case I'm gonna use 
a signal from the demo database so everybody can use it for testing purposes so I'm gonna use temperature 1 I'm gonna confirm this and in the second button I'm gonna do a similar setup I'm gonna create a navigation parameter I'm gonna name it signal just like in the first button but I'm gonna use another signal temperature 2 and I'm gonna do the same thing for the next two buttons we're gonna configure navigation parameters and we're gonna use different signals like vibration 1 for example and on the fourth button vibration 4 Now we have our navigation buttons configured. They all have their own parameters with different values. But for our subpage to receive the parameters, we're going to use another navigation control. And this control will be the navigation parameter container. Now, this control is an invisible control, so you don't have to worry about skinning it or placing it in the page but this control allows us to receive the parameters sent by the button in our subpages. Now, we have the control basically at runtime the parameters will be received by our subpage but we need to make our gauge control and labor control to work with our received parameter. So I'm gonna select both controls using control to select them both and I'm gonna go into the signals now as you can see we have here some warnings the selected item have different values to this property but we don't need to worry about this because we're gonna put the same values over here now to make these controls work with our parameter passed by our navigation button we're gonna use the parameter control placeholder and this parameter control placeholder is gonna allow us to receive the signal parameter just like we have defined in our buttons so as you can see here we have parameter control colon signal and in this control we have the same setup okay so now we're gonna run the project and I'm gonna get back when the application is loaded. The application is built and loaded in the browser so here are our navigation buttons and this is the default page that we have previously created and let's see what happens when we click this button. So I'm gonna click button 1 and as you can see as our button 1 has the temperature 1 signal defined as a parameter our controls inside our subpage will receive this parameter and use its value as the signal just like we have defined in our controls right over here so if we click the second button you can see we still have the same controls but now our controls display the values for the temperature 2 signal and this can go on and on with any button with a parameter defined as a signal and to prove this we're gonna go back in smart editor and I'm gonna add another button just like this and I'm gonna put it over here just to show you how simple it is to put another button and display the values for another signal so we have an another button here I'm gonna name it button 5 and we're gonna add a navigation item make it work with the same subpage and we're gonna define a parameter and the parameter will be named signal again and it's gonna have the value another signal from our demo database and this signal will be level 2 yes we're gonna confirm this and we're gonna run this really quickly so you can see 
it is very easy to add different signals to our same controls without increasing the size of our application because our application basically has only these few controls that you can see at design time. So we have the five buttons, the target and the sub page with its two controls. And again if we click the new button you can see the level 2 signal is displayed and the value it's shown on our gauge. And it still works back just like in our previous example for each button, for each parameter defined we have the same control displaying the values according to the parameters. Imagine how this can help you when you have an application with hundreds of signals. Not only that you don't have to create a page for each button, for each control, you don't have to create controls for each signal. So just with these two controls you can display the values for a lot of signals just by adding buttons and configuring some simple navigation parameters like this. Now the important part is to use the name of the parameter in our sub page using the parameter control placeholder. So as you can see here this is the name of our parameter. If our parameter would be different in the bottom the name will be different here too. Now you may be using the navigation framework in Smart Editor to display a sub page for each button or you may be using it like I have showed you right now to display the same sub page for each button but to pass different signal names to the controls inside this sub page. Anyway, the navigation framework is a very important and extremely powerful component of the Web Factory Smart Editor. We're done for today, but I'm gonna be here for you next time when I'm gonna show you more cool and powerful features of Web Factory Smart Editor.